this week, we discovered that even in the world of high-stakes drug running, customer satisfaction is critical. It turns out the power of positive thinking could even reach into the political realm, and could searching for a ballot box stuffer on Pornhub lead to some interesting results? Yep, all my work's done. I quit. Robot lady, sound the alarm! Warning. The following podcast is another wasted hour. Warning. The following podcast is another wasted hour. Don't waste my motherfucking time! I know for a fact that there are a lot of you that wish we would quit just like Mueller just did, but we're not going to because we're not done with our report. Our report goes on forever. I feel like I missed something because I saw an, un, an I think it was onion.com said he was releasing it to all of his um, Patreon subscribers. <laughs> yes. No, he quit. He quit. But anyhow, oh, okay. instead of quitting, instead of giving your time back, what we're going to do is take the next hour of your life and replace it with two ignorant, uninformed, ill-advised, self-deprecating morons ranting about opinions that they have no right to have, which are probably wrong and absolutely do not matter. Our goal here at Another Wasted Hour is to convince you that where we hail from just outside Washington, D.C. is not just a city of politics and scandals, but one brimming with art, music and culture and reports. As impossible as that may seem. So, listeners, now that you know why you're here in studio, we have Jero, Jero, Jero Williams. Yay! What's up? Welcome! How's it going? Good. So glad to have you back. It's been forever. We yes. had you in the first year that we did this, and I now know. we're in our third year. And so much has happened since then. And you've been on the show twice, yes. but on the same episode. On the same night. You're absolutely <laughs> right. So I feel I feel like I'm a veteran already. Yeah, no, absolutely. You've got this in your, in, in pocket at this point. Yeah, you know exactly good. what to do. Uh, for those that don't know, fast uh, like rewind back through all of our <laughs> historical <laughs> shows. Go find Jero Williams, and you'll find out what we did is we brought him into studio. We did an amazing show. It was very, very good. I thought so. Yeah. And then we didn't record it. <laughs> <laughs> bum, 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 What's this bum. we shit? I wasn't even there. That's true. You were not there, but we- I was just the guy you sent files to at that point in history. <laughs> that, that is fair. We, uh, so we, yeah, we didn't, we didn't record it. And so the, the show ended, we were like, hey, thanks, everyone. Yeah, have a good night. Yeah, goodbye. And we looked at the yeah. we looked at the computer, and we we're like, there are no files. There's no files. <laughs> I remember this making files when we record things. The files are in the computer? <laughs> right. <laughs> so we're hitting it like monkeys, and we're like, where are your files? <laughs> and I just remember, I still remember it like it was yesterday. And we went, yeah, just uh, it didn't record. And we looked over to you. We were like, so want to do that again? <laughs> and you were the best sport. I was like, let's do it. Yeah. I don't have anywhere to be. Like, Why not? Let's go. And so now, we, now that we got the warm up round over with. Right. right. Exactly. <laughs> the another wasted hour remix. That's exactly what and it And we tried, we tried our best to hit all the high notes again. <laughs> Uh, but man, that was a good show the first time through, and it was we couldn't share it with anyone. It was so organic, and it was like, hey, we're we're just gonna you know put on our acting mask for this one and uh, <laughs> try to give another Oscar worthy performance for yeah. the second episode. So, so now you're back for the third time, but yes. for the second recording. <laughs> <laughs> and wait, we we are we are recording. Yeah, right? no, I can see it right now on the screen that we actually have oh, okay. the waveform. So we're definitely recording. The files are actually in the computer tonight. Yeah, the pressure's <laughs> on because if we fuck this up, we're, there's they no going back. They go. <laughs> they go on like Mueller. That's it. Is it wrong if I'm actually, because I've been getting messages from my girlfriend in Leesburg that's some apparently massive storm coming through. Is it wrong that I'm suddenly kind of hoping that we'll just be doing the episode and all of a sudden my screen will just go black from you losing power or something. <laughs> oh, <snap. laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, uh, it would be a trend that we've had with this guest. So we know that that's, that's always possible. I, I actually, so I blocked off eight hours on my uh, <laughs> Google calendar for this particular podcast. Cause I just, I had a feeling Mr. Just Williams in case. is spending the night. Tonight. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing got, a marathon. I got my good I got my good pillow in the trunk. So, you know, <laughs> just I'm just I'm ready for anything. So yeah, we uh we're here in Washington, DC, and Mueller just retired or uh, what what would you say? Quit? I don't whatever. Resign? Quit? Resign? I, yeah. I honestly don't know. I he, haven't heard he anything gone. about this. He gone. Here's the thing. I don't want to get into like too much of the politics of things, but you gotta hand it to this guy for being just the most like just factual you could possibly be. Right. Like this guy was like, 
Oh, you need me to go investigate this thing? Cool. I'm not going to talk to anyone ever about it for and then, two <laughs> years. Right. And then I'm going to quit when I'm done because I don't have any more to do. Did, did you see the- And then there's one, one press conference where he's like, I'm done. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, but there's a report. You can go read that. And uh, that's all I got to say. And the crazy thing was, he was like, so there was an office. We just closed it. Right. Um, I had the position. That position doesn't exist anymore. Uh-huh. And I resigned. Right. And I was like, I was like, how many times can anybody do that at just any regular job? Right. That doesn't happen anywhere <laughs> Never. else, right? Like your boss will just be like, hey, can you write up this report on, uh, you know, our our trends for the past five years? Sure. And then you get emails over the course of that year and a half like, hey, so what's the status on this? And you just don't reply. Nothing. Complete radio <laughs> silence. Just nothing. And, and they, on the due date, you walk in with your report and you're like, I'm done. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> like here. So I'm giving you a report. And then on top of that report is an envelope with my official notice of resignation. Right. <laughs> um, it's been yes. wonderful. Uh, I really appreciate what I've learned here, and I will use that towards my future endeavors. I fired the rest of the office. Right. <laughs> Everything's gone. <laughs> I've already All moved. of my interns, they've already left. Desks the whole, are gone. Yeah. Places emptied out. You don't have to worry about nothing. I already turned in the cell phones. You know, And then we're, they were, we're like, will you, will you come and testify? And he's like, I got nothing more to say. <laughs> Go read the report. I put it in the report. You want me to come in read the report to you? Like, that's all I'm going to do. If only we could all be that sad. And I'm like, you're right. And I'm like, <laughs> good for you, right? <laughs> even even like his ex- explanation of things is just the most dry, straightforward, like factual thing you could possibly say. Like, yeah, you know, uh, do you think that there was a, you know, uh, obstruction of justice? Do you, do you think, you know, uh, we should uh, indict the president of that? Yeah, that's uh, that's not my job. That's not what I do. Okay, so was he? Do you think he's guilty of obstruction of justice? Yeah, uh, that's not the thing I do. I don't do that. I will say that uh, if I had thought he hadn't done anything wrong, I'd put that in the report. So is it in the report? Well, no. I think you've answered your question. Go read the fucking report. <laughs> <laughs> you want, you and the crazy the thing is, notes? we I can't give athletes such a hard time when they don't fully answer questions right. in interviews. But that Mueller comes up and says what he says, and everybody's just like. Wow, he's just so stoic. He's like the Marshawn Lynch <laughs> of politics. Right. He just was like, I made a report. I quit. I'm out. Give me my Skittles. So, what, so what you're saying, Keith, said he basically became that one IT guy at work that just posts RTFM on his door and shuts it the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but everything works. Right? Like yeah. Everything's fine. <laughs> yeah. You're like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Nope. So that was pretty crazy. There was another yeah. thing in the news that was pretty crazy. I don't know if you heard about this, but uh, there's a, a like a billionaire named Robert Smith. Yeah. He was uh, the commencement speaker at Morehouse College. And at the end of his speech, he announced to the class of uh, 2019 that he's paying off all their student loans. Hallelujah. Sounds like, legit. We need to book yes. him as a speaker more often. No, what I need to do, <laughs> what I need to do right now is I need to go home, take my 2009 diploma from Virginia Tech, change the zero to a one, yeah, and change the title <laughs> to Morehouse College and send it in and be like, hey, I wasn't at commencement, but I heard what you said and I'm a part of this. It moved me. Can we talk? <laughs> Can we talk? I just it wanna... really resonated with me. Yeah, right. Yeah, it did. <laughs> I want to write him and be like, I'd like to invite you out for a convention speech uh, about my car. <laughs> <laughs> you could just, my house, we're commencing my house. We're, and... we're having a commencement address at uh, Citibank. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so... Yeah, there's, um, there's a couple outstanding um, payments there that um, I'd like to graduate from. As much as we give <laughs> hell to people who have lots of money and don't do things, we got to throw a party or something for this guy, Dude, right? Don't we? I, I mean, I don't even know what that amount came out to. Can but... we find out what he does so I can buy some of it? Oh, right. Like, some stock or something. <laughs> right. Uh, give me what? one. Like, I, think, I don't want to say he's... Uh... Are you like the carrot emperor? Because <laughs> I will fucking buy some carrots right now. <laughs> and, and for that, not even the baby carrots. Just no, give me the full... I want adult, adult carrots Adult grown from you. carrets. Full price. I don't even need a sale. I want to I want to support you. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. That's what I'm saying. Like, what are you... Are but you just, like... Yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, you, but just think like how... Like now, those graduates have a eternal grace period. 
Right. Because for us, <laughs> right. that grace period was six months. And I swear I was living the best life I had ever lived in six months <laughs> after college. And then December came around and Department of Education was like, hello, remember us? Knock, 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 knock. <laughs> like, you owe us money. Uh, you, we didn't invite you to this party. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, I'm coming. I'm Except coming you to this stay party. and work yeah. forever. <laughs> so I, I can't even imagine like how those students must feel right now and just knowing like yeah. you're, you're going to that commencement not knowing that and then you walk out thinking like you have endless possibilities now because that's just one chunk of change Agreed. you no longer owe like i said if that dude is like the baron of honey buns i'm buying some honey man buns. let me support put the, this put man. the extra frosting on that i know i'm on a on plan right now and my nutritionist would hate me for it yeah but hey you know yolo Right, these are priorities. Yolo. We gotta, we gotta yeah. support good Americans. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll sit in the sauna for thirty minutes the next day rather than fifteen. Well, in so. in upcoming news, uh, Jero, you're actually going to be playing um, coming up. Uh, what's your show that you have? Yeah, June twelfth, um, I'll be at the Wharf, uh, which is Southwest DC, um, yeah. on the floating stage by the Anthem. So hopefully, I don't float away while and the playing. Wharf, Wharf does this like every year. It's yeah, a, they call so, it a Wednesdays at the Wharf. Yeah, right? Wednesdays at the Wharf. It's a uh, it's a concert series that lasts throughout the whole summer, so pretty much June through August. So it's a pretty big deal. This isn't like you just hanging out at the Wharf. Yeah. playing acoustic. Yeah, we with played a cup last out year front or something. We did it last year, and yeah. it was like a really good turnout. And of course, it's you know people walking along the Wharf. The weather's nice, so people you know just stop and listen anyway. Yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, we've really been putting this show out there because we really want to like pack this place, like as if. You know, almost like people are going to a show with the anthem. It kind of feels like, you know, which is also at the wharf. Yeah, it's right there. It's if right have, next to it. If you've not been to the wharf, I definitely uh, suggest it. Great food, beautiful views of the Potomac and everything like that. It's a really cool little area that they built up just a few years ago. Yeah. Um, and uh, is just a lovely place to go down and like hang out for an afternoon. Yeah, we actually uh, we also sang it like the opening weekend of the wharf. So we. Oh, I mean, wow. OK. Yeah. So I've I mean, kind of been at the war for pretty regularly like the past couple of years now so it's it's really exciting um but yeah that june 12th it's a wednesday uh we start at 6 30 play to about nine um yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun if you you're so in t- like uh, involved with the wharf, they should name something after you, like just a a pillar or something. Man, I'm, or like... I'm still trying to get my high school theater named after me. So that's <laughs> I mean, I know I got some work to do, but right. hey that that would be nice. The the yeah. Jero Williams uh emergency stand center right so like you hit the button and i just scream out help somebody need help <laughs> and and yeah, that'll be my like that. my contribution to society you're helping people yeah exactly that's, what's important. that's, that's what i love to do so we also have a, a new single from you that was released on may 10th it's yes. called that summer is that right man it hits the feels um yeah. yeah i'm i'm really proud of this one um you know it it took me two years to do actually because wow. i you know i just wanted to um you know, so it's more of like the I, I kind of call it the R and emo kind of thing. <laughs> okay, uh, that's a good collision. You know, there, yeah. R and emo. Uh, yeah. You know, a little R and B, some some soul with, but like with some like kind of really like crazy, like almost like oceanic type sounds because I really wanted mm. it to have like this this really like summer at the beach like sunset Atmosphere. vibe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's also based on a, a true experience, true okay. story. Cool. Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm really excited about it. Well, we're gonna have a little snippet of that later in the show. But if you want to jump to the one hour mark of this episode, you can listen to the entire track. Come back and join us. Um, we if you want to hear more music and see more shows, because Jero is playing all over the place all of the time. Yeah. We're not gonna just like list them here, but go up to facebookcom JW experience yes correct so no no e in experience yeah, yeah. experience but with no e yeah. so jw for jero williams experience minus the e yes and we just I, and the reason why just so people understand it's like because you know when you go see bands like and this is not the, the case with every band but sure. you know sometimes it's like we I, I always tell people when you come see us you're not just seeing people on stage playing songs you're seeing an, a, a show you're seeing an experience i like to right. you know be interactive with the crowd i like to you Visuals, know get get people moving and yeah. and talk to people while we're performing and just yeah. have a good time so yeah that's what jwx is um that's kind of like how we define ourselves when we're that that, that full band uh setup that's cool so yeah come come on through 
Come on, Excellent. see us this summer. And don't forget, Wednesday, uh, June twelfth, go check them up uh, at the Wharf down in Washington D.C. Yes. And then JW Experience without the E to go find out more about upcoming shows, and you're gonna have more releases throughout the year. Yeah. So yeah. Go check those out. Excellent. Well, moving on, we are gonna uh, now make you the editor in chief of your own publication. We're launching it worldwide. Yes. All right. And come through news. Yeah, exactly. We're going to be your loyal uh, reporters. We've gone out, scoured the internet for news to pitch to you because okay. we want to. We want to make our name. So we want our news in your publication. But you got to let us know whether or not it's considered news. Okay. All right. So uh, without further ado, let's start off with Adam. Upset cocaine customers help FBI bust massive drug ring in Pontiac. I guess that's who you don't want to piss off, huh? Yeah, you really don't want to piss off your consumers. But instead of a bunch of them named Karen asking for the manager, apparently they just get the FBI on your ass. <laughs> so, uh, but, yeah, that 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 does seem like if you're doing illegal things, you should probably have better customer service. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently the FBI was investigating uh, this massive drug ring all the way from Mexico up through the post office, uh, yada, yada, yada. And uh, what... One of the things that cracked it was they got a bad shipment, which caused everyone to start complaining about it. And the FBI started to pick up on all those complaints. And that's what <laughs> helped them track down this entire ring and bust it. Quality control. That's your that's the name Pretty of the much. game here. I guess the same thing could have possibly happened if it was really good shit, right? Because then they would hear like they, all yeah. the murmurings of like, that shit's really good. Yeah. And then track so, it I don't know, because if you've been on Facebook, not a lot of people talk about how great things are, but <laughs> something comes out bad and the I've, world explodes. I've seen some people say how great America is. And uh, like, there, like there, there, there's one live, laugh, love post and then a bunch of thing, things about how horrible someone is. Yeah. So True. <laughs> that's, that's true. Wait, so... Now the thing, the, the first question that I had, yeah, because uh -huh. you mentioned Pontiac, sure, yeah. So my thing is, were they complaining about it while driving Pontiacs, <laughs> or was all the complaining taking place at the old Pontiac Silverdome where <laughs> the Lions used to play? Because I'm, you know, you you have to be specific, like that, you know, if it's if it's my news station or yeah. paper, yeah. You know, I want to make sure uh, people have the facts. I want to make sure like people know exactly what we're talking about. Here. I feel like Pontiac it, region of Michigan. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so, I, so you were close with the Detroit Lions. Yeah. So I, I was, I was with it. Okay. I would feel like if they were watching the Detroit Lions and driving a Pontiac. Oh, they, they be on cocaine. They would have other complaints. <laughs> 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 Cocaine is the least of your problems at that point. <laughs> Cocaine's a hell of a drug. That's, that's what I heard. Right. I took some cocaine. I ended up with a fucking Pontiac. <laughs> oh, man. That is some dirty shit going on man. right there. Woo. Return that. And, uh, and of all places, Pontiac, Michigan. Mm. Like, of all the places. Yeah. Well, because what else is there to do around there? That's uh, a good point. I mean, well, the Lions aren't winning, so that's you got a point there. <laughs> it's like I'm going to either do some cocaine or skin a rabbit. Like, that's all I got. Those are my options, right? <laughs> We're not even mentioning the Great Lakes at all. No, no, nothing around the Great Lakes. Yeah, they're not that great. Uh, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> but America's great. That's what I. Yeah. That's that's what I heard. Make the lakes great Make again. Make the lakes great again. <laughs> <laughs> Make homes great again. <laughs> so is it news? You know what? I'm going to say it is news. Yeah? I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it's news. All right. He's out ahead. Sounds good. <laughs> uh, uh, the makers of Noah's Ark have filed a lawsuit over rain damage. In their defense, it was a replica of Noah's Ark. But I was about to say, defense, that's an old ass ark. In my defense, it's not a very good replica of uh, Noah's Ark. If they it got, got some holy damage. termites on that ark, too. <laughs> it's two of everything. There. So uh, that's a good question. Did they have two termites? Yeah. And were people like nervous? <laughs> like right. looking at them like, you don't even fucking know. Did they even Do make not. glass back then? Because it's like you had to put those two termites like in a non- wooden structure right i don't think they had that oh this I, is a good question that i don't think has been brought up before because you know like after, was it 40 days and 40 nights after about 20 days they were like where the termites go where are the fucking termites <laughs> it'll be noah's it'll be noah's canoe 
uh, the someone have eyes on the termites? <laughs> right. And people are like, where did you get a fucking walkie-talkie from? <laughs> like, I'm I'm Noah, the, I know, I know God for Jesus I Christ. I prayed. I yeah. prayed for a walkie-talkie and he gave me one. <laughs> right. I needed one of each. <laughs> right. Otherwise, they don't work. He just, he just wiped everything. out. He wiped out all of mankind. Like, I, he, he had to do something semi-good. That's probably why they started what? that. Right. They were going to do just one of every animal. But then they got one walkie-talkie, and they were like, well, this isn't useful. We're going to need two walkie-talkies. <laughs> you know what? Two of everything. We're just putting two of everything on there. Yep. I, I'm with it. Yes, I'm with it. That's the reason why. Yeah. That's why they needed two of everything. There's, I'm with it. Like, name so, one other reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can name a few. But no, yeah. So, okay, wait. So what's what's the deal with the, the, the rain damage? Like, what? So, uh, so there was a uh, rain um, and there was a bit of a uh, like a mudslide, which uh, they blamed on the rain, and that ran into the ark. And then the uh, they made a claim with their insurance, mm. and the insurance was like, "That's not worth as much as we as you think it is." And they were like, "It's the fucking ark." And they so <laughs> it's not a sea shed. They apparently spent one million dollars fixing the fake ark, or what I like to call the fark. <laughs> and, the fark. Yeah. <laughs> what the fark? Yeah, let's go down to Noah's Fark. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, the first thing that pops in my head is yeah. that's not a good arc if you, I mean, it's a boat, which means it's supposed to withstand water. Yeah, well. Am I am I wrong in saying that? Is it? I mean, I, I feel guess like you may have a point. Yeah, depends on the, the uh, design of the boat, I suppose. <laughs> If it's like a U boat, it just goes underwater. Now imagine if those <laughs> cocaine people in Pontiac had built that ark. They might have. They might. I'm, <laughs> I think they might have had a better result. I'm That's just where they got the cocaine from. Yeah. They probably would have gotten it done faster, right? <laughs> and then they complained because it was done so fast. Yeah. Jeez. If I, if yeah. that if that replica doesn't have two of everything on it, I'm calling bullshit. <laughs> I'm just saying, like. Even like wax animals, or right? Something. No, yeah, you could totally make them out of wood or something. I just want to see the volume that that takes up. Here's where the crocodiles were. Yep. Here's where That's we put the honeybees. Like a lot of damn animals on one boat. <laughs> just a, and a lot of insects. I'm just saying. Right. It's got to be creepy. And then what if somebody was allergic? Yeah. That'd be the worst forty days ever. Yeah. Imagine. I here's the real question: Did they put ducks on there, or they were just like, "You're good." <laughs> <laughs> well that's what I felt about birds right. like bir the birds could have just been flying the whole time like right. you don't need to put them on the ark yeah that's a that's duck a just alongside the why, ark be like can I, I get up in there and they're like no why, you're why fine. am I gonna why am I gonna put a dolphin in there right. they can just <laughs> swim they can they can make it it's the fresh water fucks with them right whales they could now imagine <laughs> putting two big ass whales on an ark like that's okay uh, it was Star Trek Four, or I think it was, that taught me how difficult it is to transport a whale. So I don't know if they were be able to pull that one. Yeah, off. that's probably true. All right, so is it news? I'm usually a holy roller, but that was five. I I, I have to say no on this one. No, all right. Yeah, not news. No, this is make my paper. Adam, I'm so disappointed. <laughs> Finally, a trend in politics that I can stand. Mm. Politician puts ad on Pornhub and says, you have to be where your voters are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes. I do not my want to touch those polls. <laughs> I'm trying to find the other guy's name, but my my favorite part about this is that so this is this is a Danish politician. Yeah. He they, they describe him in this article as middle right. Yeah. His main competitor is a like far right alt-right sort of guy and when asked if he would wh why he put his ads on Pornhub he said not only does he, the voters are he said but now I'm in the news instead of that other guy and I'll do anything I can to take away screen time from him huh. ah, that's so that's great. how it leans <laughs> yeah okay. yeah, yeah. So, so don't go into Pornhub and search for ballot box stuffer <laughs> <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but it makes me wonder. I, I kind of want to now. <laughs> but it makes me wonder where, like, what algorithm did he use to put the ads up? Like, right. where, what were like, the what are you searching for so that that ad pops up? Right. <laughs> are you looking for, you know, those Sarah Palin videos from back in oh, way back when? Yeah, yeah. You know, so even like little Trump and Hillary going on. Not to say I know that I, what I, I know a friend who knows who knows who, about who's that, that college so. humor guy that's posting like all like the really 
I don't know what the word like wholesome videos on Pornhub where it's just like <laughs> I make the bed after or it's like I get you some water because I feel like you might be parched. Yeah. Just doing these super wholesome videos on Pornhub. So it might be fans of that guy. Okay. That, yeah, no, that'd be good. What he he kind of looks like him too. What he should have done is the opposite, right? Is that he should have bought ads for his competitor whenever like incest is looked up. Whoa. <laughs> and then, like, do you like incest? You're in luck. Vote for this dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh no all the uh do you like butt stuff yeah well, <laughs> this guy does too vote for him yeah like, man that uh, could backfire she's in a manner of speaking you know what like honestly just for that tactic alone because he said a very crucial thing you got to go where your voters are and not a lot of politicians do that I'm 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 just I'm just gonna be real. How many times have we seen Trump in the hood? Never. I believe the actual quote was, "You have to come where your where your voters are." Okay, so yes, thank you. That that's yes, because we we do like accuracy at this uh, this newspaper. So <laughs> I, I'm definitely saying that that is news. Yeah, all that right. is definitely news for me. All right, the head of Lu- of Lithuania's ruling party feels victorious despite coming in third in elections. It's a quote. They feel victorious, which is great because I feel like I have a six pack. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't know that we could just declare things, but that sounds good. I like it. I feel like my mortgage is just over with. Right. You've already paid off your house. I feel yeah. like all that exposure money, I can actually turn over into real money and right. buy a real Ferrari that we had talked about earlier. I feel like I should be driving a Ferrari. Yeah, I, f- I feel like it. No, and, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I feel taller. I'm so- <laughs> I just, I feel six feet tall. Yes. Uh, Can we just uh, like, just pick up identities of anything we want? We know that like uh, that gender identity, social construct. Can we just start making everything social construct? Why not? Be like, why not? Everybody's breaking the rules these days. Why not? I feel like I shaved this morning. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like I smell good. That's a better joke when you can see me. Just for the record. (laughs) Not as good on, on a podcast, but. So yeah, it, I I think this is a great trend. Lithuania may be setting something here. I mean, they they must be the ones who started the whole participation trophies and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you're feeling good after winning third. I mean, how many how many how many like people were there? Like how many three? Uh, no, oh. I don't. I don't right. know. <laughs> <laughs> I just would like them to be like, you know, like, like how, yeah, many, ca- how many candidates were there? Now, if you're like <laughs> two, you know, if like you're running a 5K and you finish like third out of, you know, 300 in your group or whatever. Yeah. Yes. That's something to feel victorious about. Not bad. Right. But if you're the third candidate out of three or two. Or right. <laughs> <laughs> you got two write-ins on your ballot. Like, <laughs> wow, I feel so victorious today. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I think I. I don't know. I like it. I think that they. Um. They should. We should do it more. I sent. I assume that they interviewed them and they were like, "Why do you feel victorious?" And they're like, "Well, we're still on the podium." And they're like, "That's not how elections work." Right. <laughs> like you don't get bronze. Right. You, you just. Don't... I, I got a medal. Yeah, like, I got for, a medal. I'm really for, happy about this. I got a politics medal. And they're like, no, Mm. you're just not in politics anymore. (laughs) (laughs) It's the only job that somebody else can tell you if you have it anymore, right? Like, like just the general public is like, no, I'm pretty sure my boss could tell me I don't have my job anymore. Yeah, that's true. But like, but like (laughs) the customers can't just be like, nah, (laughs) should you work here? No, no. And then you don't (laughs) No, Cause see, at least with. With that, we can still put in our like two weeks, or right. or we could just be like Mueller and not reply for two years, and then just show up and just dump <laughs> everything and be like, "Yo, I'm out, peace." We had a story about that like months ago. Remember, there was somebody in some government somewhere where he just didn't show up for like 14 years. Oh yeah, people he was didn't... still getting a paycheck. Yeah, nobody noticed that he was th- like wasn't there. And then like <laughs> the reason he got caught was they were like doing some type of like 20 year celebration of him working there. And he wasn't there, and nobody had seen him. <laughs> he had been dead for six, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> that's so, the yeah. kind of stuff that only like those type of people can get away with, right? Because I would screw <laughs> it how up. Many, how many times have you have you said to yourself, you know what? If I just don't go to work for three days in a row, who would notice? Uh huh. Everyone would notice. Everyone. <laughs> and you <laughs> could be weird. you could be the lowest on the totem pole, and everybody would know. 
have you seen so and so? Yeah, we got to be quieter. Right. <laughs> That's what we got to do. Be I usually see him at lunch, and I didn't see him today. Yeah, no, I yeah, it would never years. work for me. Never, <laughs> not want. They'd be like, you know what? He's usually over here bothering me, <laughs> and he isn't. They noticed that after an hour. I appreciate it, but <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's working. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so is it news? Ah, you know, I I do like a little a little humor, so yeah. you know, just you know, kind of makes you uh look and appreciate some of those little things. So yeah, I'll say it's news. Do you feel humorous? I, I do. I feel very humorous. <laughs> yeah, actually, see, look, it's working. Same as this if like good. I I feel like you shaved today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Adam. All right, so now we're heading into our lightning round because we're kind of running low on time, so we're just going right. to throw some headlines at you. Okay. Giant robot Trump tweeting on toilet while shouting, I'm a very stable genius, shipped to UK for protests. <laughs> no. No? No? No. Oh. no. <laughs> That's fine. That's understandable. That I feel out. like it is, though. It is. <laughs> yes. US, U.S. fugitive agrees to hand himself in if he gets 15,000 Facebook likes. Yes, <laughs> definitely. I, I That wouldn't pass me for a minute. <laughs> I'd vote for that. Wait, but why Facebook? Why didn't go to Instagram? Right. Well, he's obviously behind the times. Yeah, way behind the times. I mean, I, that honestly, might, be, might be what he's arrested for. He should have just said MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> if he can get three friends and Tom is not one of them, yeah. then I, yeah, I totally would have released If them. I uh, get 100 friends on Friendster, <laughs> I will go back to jail. <laughs> It wouldn't happen because people would be like, where's Friendster? Oh, I don't they'll even find know. it. Oh, somebody will make it and then get like 101 and then shut it down. We built Friendster just right. to get this guy in jail. <laughs> All right, Adam. Massachusetts yeah, Massachusetts man arrested after repeatedly calling 911 while in back of cop car. <laughs> like, I don't, what? Hey, where's your phone? How, like, how did he answer right. the question of where are you? <laughs> like, that's the first thing they say, right? right. You call nine one one. They're like, "What's your location?" He's like, "Back of a police car." No, he, and no like, he watched like he watched like some like movie like Taken or something like that, where they have the phone off to the side and they like secretly hit the number. Yeah, like I, I'm totally talking out loud right now, but like I'm talking to you, officer. Right, not my phone on the side. Help me, please, officer. <laughs> would you agree that you are currently kidnapping me? <laughs> <laughs> is it true that we're at the corner of Glebe and Sycamore? <laughs> Why are you talking so loud? No reason! <laughs> send help! What? You want me to send help? <laughs> yes! Sanity, please. <laughs> God, as funny as that would be, I'm going to say no. No! Oh. All right. You can um, tie it up here, Keith. Driver who said, uh, a driver who, quote, swerved to avoid octopus, had taken drugs. Seemed like an obvious co <laughs> correlation there. Wait, what? Yes, there is a, an Englishman who... Uh, you know what? If it's like a seafood truck, the like door was open or something like that, and the octopus <laughs> just like came out? Or is this or is this like an episode of like, is this like from like Deep Rising, where it's like a 40-foot <laughs> squid, like in the middle of nowhere? Um, I'm going to say yes. Yeah, he, has, he had no recollection of the crash, of driving before the crash. Um, but when asked uh, why he crashed, uh, let's see, he said, uh, it got a bit bumpy for a while. I swerved to avoid an octopus. Uh, it is pretty bad out there having to dodge all that white bait. <laughs> and then they found out that he was also on a cocktail of drugs. <laughs> was it the Pontiac cocaine? Probably. <laughs> he yeah, had that's, that's why the FBI caught on because all these like crazy things started happening. Right. That's Jeez. They're just following that. He he hit I feel like what? the title of this is just Or is that like, just what, what the octopuses want us to think? What was that, Adam? Or is, or is that just what the various octopuses want us to think? Ooh. That's right. They're taking over the world. Right. <laughs> <laughs> on a scale of one to eight, how many legs does an octopus have? <laughs> 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 well, after he swerved out of the way, did he get one of them? Or <laughs> other than that, <laughs> uh, all right. So, is the news? Yes, yes. 
All right, so I think maybe we've ended tied again. We're doing. I good think you managed to tie it up. Yeah, yeah, sweet. I'm usually a perennial loser on all of this. So, so are you feeling victorious? After I that? feel like I really won. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, very feeling very victorious. Yes. After this tie, after a tie. <laughs> um, so like soccer. So last thing we need is a name for this publication. What what would you name this publication so people can run to the newsstands and pick it up? Yeah, so I actually had a couple of things. One, after this wonderful conversation, yeah. I was going to say one was what happens in Pontiac. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I think that would I think that would catch people. At first I was going to say crank that happy daily news, but that no. No. What happens in Pontiac? Is it in Pontiac or in a Pontiac? <laughs> <laughs> the A can be in parentheses. <laughs> what happens in parentheses? A what, Pontiac. What dot, happens dot. in a Pontiac in Pontiac? <laughs> <laughs> All right, sounds good. It. So rush to your local vendor. Go find uh, the latest publication called "What Happens in Possibly a Pontiac." <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much. You did a great job, Thank I you. think, right? I, I feel good. Yeah, you feel, I feel victorious. You feel victorious? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. I feel victorious. You're like, yeah, I could do this. It's not <laughs> hard. People get paid for this? Right. Um, so in studio, once again, we have Jerome Williams. He is playing Wednesday, June 12th at the Wharf uh, for Wednesdays at the Wharf in Washington, D.C. We've got a track from him called That Summer, which is a new single released on May 10th. Yeah. If you want to hear more music from him and more shows, uh, go up to Facebook.com slash JW Experience with no E for the beginning of experience. Yes. You can also go to Spotify, iTunes, all those wonderful streaming sites. Anything that's got music, Jero yes, Williams. I am, yes. And Jero is spelled uh, J-E-R-R-E-A-U. J-A. J-A. Ah, see, that's good. I'm glad I, I asked. You had one job. One job. And it was to hit record for this podcast. <laughs> and I did that. I did that really well this time. <laughs> I nailed it. Getting your name right yes, was J wrong. J-A-R-R-E-A-U. Yeah. And then Williams, just like you'd spell Williams. Yeah, exactly. Super easy part. Uh, <laughs> so let's talk about this. Uh, tell me a little bit about that summer. What uh, You said it took two years for you to get this track down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What What was the the time that it took? Um, well, it wasn't like, you know, the full two years. It was just kind of like I started, we, um, uh, the producer and I, uh, I recorded out of Sweet Spot Studio in Annandale. And who's your producer? Uh, his name is Nico Lage. Hey, Nico. Yeah. <laughs> and, going? uh, so, I mean, amazing producer, just amazing musical mind. Um, so we were actually, we, we got in the studio and in about three hours, we crafted the, the structure of the song vocals yeah. um you know harmonies melody all all of that right so after like going away for a bit like i kind of i knew something still was missing oh okay but i just i couldn't figure out what couldn't put and your finger then, on it yeah and then the more that i was kind of performing and gigging yeah you know i was like okay like how would this sound with a full band and what does oh, it need? Oh, okay. So then from that, I was like, okay, no, this needs a bass line. Like it needs, you know, some different kind of like drum tracks to it or something yeah. like that. So, and then um, uh, my guitarist, Eric Scherer, actually also contributed acoustic and electric guitar to nice. the track too. Okay. So it kind of gave it an extra element. But yeah, so um, this song was pretty much like based on a situation that happened uh, my last year in college. Mm -hmm. where I had, like, you know, we, we were talking about earlier, like how people kind of use social media for like their own like crazy memes, whether you use it for good or for bad. And in this, <laughs> right. in this particular instance, I used it for a negative purpose, thinking that <laughs> that person would not see what I posted. Well, and, we're terrible people when we're young, aren't we? Yes. Oh. Everyone's just <laughs> fucking terrible. Oh, just the in worst. College. Especially oh. when you could actually post what you feel at a current time. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, imagine like being in elementary school and you just post, oh my God, this nap was terrible. Like this cot is, uh, is, is the worst. And then you just get in trouble with the teacher because they see what you posted. Right. But we don't have, I didn't have that back then. So yeah, this, um, it was like, it was a girl that I was really interested in and then she wasn't interested in me and she started dating another guy. And, you know, I, my selfish ways, I was just kind of like well, what does that guy have that I don't? And, you know, kind of posted something mean about it on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, which 
I can't say since it's been deleted. I'm sure somebody will go back in my Twitter at some point in time and find something. But what, <laughs> I mean, that, that tends to be the business now. Yeah. Um. No, but uh. Yeah. So pretty much after that, like it kind of you know made me realize like how much I had heard a person who was like really special to me and like dear to me as a friend. Sure. Um. And I just kind of had that that song in my head or like like at least the words for years, and then finally decided to write it you know want to write it out because yeah. i said that's really going to be the only way that i really release that emotion so um yeah so it's it's a really like what i said earlier r and emo kind of thing yeah kind of internal in your feelings but it has a very summer like sunset at the beach type it's vibe. more chill than i'm used to from you. you yeah i'm used to thinking of you like energy you know like that that having having that kind of drive to your music and right. this one's more like laid back and more introspective exactly and uh, and I like the re- the fact that you're you know referring to things that are you know pretty topical like Twitter and stuff like that yeah you don't hear that in songs very often but it's so day to day for us I mean it it should be in our poetry because well, it's things that affect us every single day yeah and with this it was more like saying like hey let's put social media away and g- get back to like face to face conversations because i feel like a lot of times now people will go out and talk to people through social media yeah and you know where back then we used to like we used to talk to each other on the phone or if we really wanted to talk about things we would see each other face to face and work it out yeah and those things really don't happen as much anymore because things get so misconstrued through social media so Yeah. yeah i really wanted to emphasize that and i haven't i haven't talked to her since then you know so and and like I'm like if she hears the song or through whatever channel then yeah. okay that's fine but you we'll know get the I, two of you on the show <laughs> and talk it out all right well let's take a listen to this track so once again this is that summer it's a new release uh, a new single released May 10th by Jero Williams you said those words you disgust me even at my heart since the day you told me. Now here I stand, wanting to talk to you. Apologies ready, but I can't get through to you. All I need is to retreat. One more chance to delete that tweet. No Facebook or Twitter, phone calls or texting. It's interesting because we talk about all the different layers that are there. Yeah. But it's all subtle. Like everything, yeah. there's no like guitar riff per se or anything. Right. It's all these little tweaks mm-hmm. that make you feel um, like you're just in that atmosphere. And it's funny you say that because at first I, I wanted there to be a guitar solo in this. Yeah. Like almost <laughs> as if like, because I told, I told my guitarist like when we were sitting in the studio recording, I was like, when you're playing, make the guitar cry. Yeah. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like really so we could feel the emotion. Cause like you were saying, like, yeah, I'm so used to being like R and B funk and like yeah. everything being like upbeat vibe. Yep. But this one it was like I was really concerned with I, I really wanted to be vulnerable. Yeah. You know, because I feel like that's really what makes an artist an artist. You know, you have to you have to be willing in. to kind of peel peel part of yourself away like an onion in a way, so yeah. that people see who the real you is. Is. That's what makes it compelling, right? Yeah. And so if you want to listen to the entire track, fast forward to the one hour mark of this show. Once again, uh, Wednesday, June 12th, you can hear that song and others live at the Wharf down in Washington, D.C. Uh, that was a track called uh, That Summer. Um, get it anywhere there's digital music. I'm sure you can go and download it and check out the JW Experience without the E up on Facebook.com to find out more about where he's going to be and what he's going to be doing. Um, so let's move on since we're running a little late on time. Uh, and get you into our brand new well not brand new anymore but for you since you came on on year one yeah you've not done this yet oh, this is a snap. little game show we called please god just get one right yeah all right so our previous guest uh we had shrewdness of apes they uh are they played uh, saturday may 18th at rock and roll hotel nice yeah they did great and they had a album release party they had a uh a new album, self-titled, The Shrewdness of Apes. Okay. Um, so you can go to a shrewdnessofapesmusic.com to go find out about them. If you need to drop them an email because you're pissed off that they gave you this category, <laughs> feel free to reach out to them there. Are you ready for your category? Give it to me. Hitchcock. Oh. How you feeling? Oh. We yeah. were just talking about uh, 
Jordan Peele earlier and like Twilight Zone and all that stuff. So. Right. Yeah, so this might maybe, be in your wheelhouse maybe, a little bit. We'll see. You just got to get one right. You got six chances. Okay. All right. So um, without further ado, Adam, start us <clears throat> off. Released in 1940, Hitchcock's first American-made film won two Academy Awards, Best Picture, and Best Cinematography out of a total of 11 nominations. It focuses on Aris, uh, aristocratic widower Maxime de Winter and his new young wife and the shadow his former wife continues to cast. What was the name of this film? Ooh. It's not Rear Window, is it? No. no. Rebecca is what we were what, looking for. What was it? Rebecca. 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 Okay. Yeah. Really well known for it. But I, ironically, in our generation, it's not as well known. But that, yeah. at that point, it was this crazy block. Nobody had now heard of him before. It. And he came to, the, uh, to America and threw this uh, movie out into the world. And people were blown away by it. I have to watch that now. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, next question. Hitchcock movies were nominated for 50 Oscars, various categories. Mm -hmm. How many of those 50 nominations were for Alfred Hitchcock himself? Mm. So, for instance, like Best Picture is for the picture. I'm going to say 12. No, good guess. Five, actually. Oh. Interestingly enough, he never won Best Director. Which is a record. He was nominated five times, never won. There's only uh, three other directors um, who have done that, and that's the most that wow. a nominated nom- a nominee has not been um, awarded. All right, yeah, zero for two right now. But if you I play know. baseball, you just get one. That's right. Your average is up. One. Yep. All right, Adam. When a young Hitchcock read in a trade paper that famous players Lasky, the production arm of Paramount Pictures was opening a studio in London, he was working as a title card artist. He illustrated some title cards for the film that they were working on at that time and sent them in, which got him hired. What movie was Famous Players Lasky working on that gave Hitchcock his start? Mm, It's a tough one. Jeez. Got his start. So this is before he was a director and he was still just drawing title cards. Yep. Wow. Wow. Uh, it's a tough, I'm just going to say, I'm just throwing out a random level say like Casablanca. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right. Roughly the right time period. Yeah. No, the sorrows of Satan. Oh, of course. Good old of course. Sorrows I of knew Satan. that. Of course. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, in uh, 1968, uh, when Alfred Hitchcock was recognized with a Lifetime Achievement Award, uh, by the Academy of Recording Arts mm-hmm. or Film, I don't know, Academy Film. I don't know, whatever it is. He delivered the third shortest Oscar acceptance speech in history. Mm. How many words were in it? Six. Oh, you're so close. It was five. <laughs> it was five. He tied with jo- with <laughs> Joe Pesci. <laughs> Al, uh, Alfred Hitchcock said, uh, thank you very much indeed. And that was it. Yes. After missing he all- with Joe Pesci. Was Joe Pesci's five something like whatever you want, Leo gets? <laughs> ah. No, it was not. It, <sighs> the, the story behind Joe Pesci's apparently was that he was so absolutely certain he wouldn't win that he prepared nothing. <laughs> so he just went up and he was like. Thank you. I'm really honored. And that was like, that's Jeez. all he could like muster because <laughs> he had nothing. He was absolutely <laughs> certain he was going to lose. Uh, all right, Adam. Hitchcock is known for having stated that, quote, actors are cattle, expressing his disdain for them in his belief that they were little more than props on set to be used by the writers and directors. In response, actress Carol Lombard brought three cows on set wearing the name tags of herself, Robert Montgomery, and Gene Raymond, the stars of the film, to surprise Hitchcock. What film were these actors working on with the famous director at that time? It's one of his films. It had Carol Lombard. Robert Montgomery and Gene Raymond yeah, as the as leads. If I know who those people are. <laughs> <laughs> and I know movies, and that's terrible. Now I'm going to go home and watch like the whole Hitchcock collection. <laughs> um, I'm going to say The Birds. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Gosh! Oh. I know every Hitchcock movie but the ones you name. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we planned it that way. <laughs> <laughs> we know he's gonna say we know he's gonna say six words, but it's actually five. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Quoted as saying, "Worse than frightened, they revolt me." The director who caused countless phobias in moviegoers professed that he has a phobia for what type of food? What type of food did Alfred Hitchcock have an, such a strong aversion to that he was not only frightened of them, but absolutely revolted by them? Crabs. <laughs> that, that's a good answer. Yeah. Because... <laughs> They're kind of revolting looking, aren't they? <laughs> Watch, it's like something like like snails or something like that. Aren't no, they? eggs. What? Yeah, he found eggs to be horrifying. He said they're just that that's white with no holes, and then you open it up and just the yellow yolk goes. He goes, blood is this like joyous red, and then this yellow yolk comes out. It's horrifying. He obviously ugly. did not lift. <laughs> he had no protein in his system no no he definitely missed every leg day <laughs> man that was a good topic though that was a good subject like yeah. i'm kind of like you've learned things uh, yeah and i wanna... you didn't win but you learned yes, something I know. I just... and so we all win because of that yes so i still feel victorious <laughs> the good news is you can now take that embarrassment and pain and feeling of failure or maybe you feel like you're victorious um <laughs> And ball it up into a new category okay. that you can now pass on to our next guest. You know, I'm a very, I'm a very giving person. Oh, okay. So I don't know who your next contestant will be. Right. But given the spirit of me recently seeing Aladdin, I'm gonna say let's have the topic be Disney. Disney. All right. I think we can make I'm that a huge, work. I'm a huge Disney fan. So stick around next week for six questions about Disney and see if you mm. can guess them along with our next guest. And uh, if they do well, maybe they'll come to your show on uh, July 12th and thank you in person. Yeah. And say, thank or you June. For such, or June. Sorry. June 12th. And say, uh, thank you for such an easy topic. <laughs> it was That I got Disney. all six right. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Uh, we'll just make them hard. We'll just right, find really you. terrible things I'm about Disney. It. I'm totally with it. It will be like, what appendage did Disney have an extra one of? <laughs> and they'll be like, what? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> he had 11 toes. I had no fucking idea. Yeah, <laughs> How could I have known that? Love this, it. Yeah. All right. So uh, moving on, let's find out a little bit more about you. Yeah. We'll do a little we'll segment we call again. Near and Far, wherever you are. Far! See? See? That's what it's all about. It's about. Gotcha. You understand? You understand. Okay. I understand. So we've got two stories from you, one near, one far, mm -hmm. right? Um, so let's start with Near, okay. and then we'll move outward. Gotcha. I, I hear you had a, an issue with uh, staying upright at Sully's. <laughs> is, that, <laughs> is that right? Oh. Uh. It's one of those that you will forever talk about yeah. in my performing career. Uh, so, yeah, Solly's is on uh, U Street yeah. um, downtown in D.C. And uh, we were performing there, uh, JWX. And so it was like our first time there. And the way that Solly's stage is set up, it kind of has these weird divots on the side, like right by the front. Really? Okay. So you know it's there. Yeah. And, of course, me... I like to move on stage. I don't like to stay sure. in the same spot. Yeah. So of all songs, we're we're doing an original song. We're doing one of my songs. Yeah, you're bringing the energy. I'm, I'm bringing the energy. And it, it kind of starts off a little like subdued, right? Okay. But then as I get into it, I take one step to my right. Yeah. And I feel myself like falling back like Matrix style. <laughs> <laughs> like All slow motion. At, Bullets are going by and, you. And I ended up falling like right back into my keyboardist. Oh no! And I'm, and I'm on the floor now. the 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 funniest part of all of this is one, I didn't stop singing. Yeah. Two, <laughs> nailed it. I look over at my band; they're still playing. <laughs> so I sang the whole song, the rest of the song from the ground. Nice. And <laughs> the, like, it was so funny because you're looking at people's reactions, and they're kind of like they don't know whether to laugh. Or they don't know whether, like, should we help him up or... <laughs> Is he stuck? The song actually <laughs> sounds really good. 
Because I'm like, <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, get to this point where I want to, I want people to hear more of my original music at this yeah. point. And I didn't want to stop. Right. So I, you know, yeah, there was a little note in there that was a little shrieked a little right. bit. You're like, <laughs> and I just love you <laughs> so much. Yeah, yeah. Right. And and that's exactly what it was. And so my um, the keyboard player happened to be recording that night. Yes. And I was going to ask. That would just make the best live recording. The crazy part was he had like, so he sent me the, he sent me the clip. And I have yet to watch it. I have yet to look at it to this day. But it's it's like the quality is not as great. So you can't really like. Oh, yeah. I, I was watching some of it. You know how like when sure. a scary part in a movie comes, you're not quite ready for. And you know exactly when it happens. So you put the movie on pause. Right. And try to like gather yourself. <laughs> and then you're like, all right, I'm just going to fast forward to I'm the next breathe. chapter. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's do this. So that was, you know, for me, I was kind of like, you know what? The best, the best performers have done this before. Like oh, they've yeah. fallen off stage, they've fallen on stage. You know, I we've had a gig where we didn't perform because the power went out. So I was like, "Ooh, I've done something Beyonce has done." Yeah. So <laughs> I was like, you know, got to feel pretty good about that. But yeah, You're checking all the boxes. Yeah. So they they always they never let me live that down. So that was I'm that was to a funny think night. If I if I've fallen off, I don't think I've ever fell off a stage. I don't know that I. Did I fall on stage? I feel like I must have, but I don't recall ever doing it. I know I almost took out like half my band one time because there was a riff we were doing where I decided to just do full windmill head banging. Yeah. And then it got to the top, not got to the end, got to the end of the riff and I just stood up and was so dizzy. I like oh, fell no. sideways, <laughs> dodged my mandolin player, and then tried to go back the other way and had to like dodge a guitar player. And then I got my feet back under me. Jeez. But from the audience, it looked like I was just kind of running around on stage. And really, I just couldn't tell which way was up. Oh, man. I definitely <laughs> laid down on stage a bunch of times. I was just like, I'm tired. I'm just going to lay here. <laughs> you just continue without me. The same on the floor. <laughs> it's going to be fine. Oh, it's cool down here. Right. <laughs> um, I remember one time we played Borders Books and part of like the whole gig was that they had like a little like PA. Yeah. You plug everything into the PA. And right. play, we were acoustic, right? Mm -hmm. and you play your acoustic thing and sell their books and everything like that. We got to this one and they were like, uh, yeah, um, we don't have PA. And we were like, oh. So what we did is we just set up and we just played like flat out acoustic and like the drummer just had like brushes and like was yeah. super quiet and like we all just like turned everything way down so that like you could hear some vocals oh, that's and we're just big. like everybody come in close because this is not going to get that loud <laughs> <laughs> so you make do you make do yeah all right so for far uh something about the hills in denver which i believe Man. are mountains jeez <laughs> um yeah so I, I went on like this uh my first gig like traveling across country uh, with another band and we were playing a wedding um, in Vail, which is like two hours away from Denver. Yeah, right. So Beautiful we're skiing area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So but of course, this is like there's no snow, nothing. It's just all, you know, like regular. Mountains. Yeah, well, because, yeah, it's not so winter. anyway. So we get to this ranch and this ranch is like off the beaten path. There's no signs. There's nothing. So not creepy at all. No, not at all. <laughs> I, 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 I kind of looked at it and I was like, you know what? This reminds me of uh, all those horror movies where the black guy dies. Right, yeah. but except most of the band is black, so there's plenty to to pick from. It's kind of like an LL like Cool J, odds. Deep Blue Sea situation. <laughs> like I have a chance of surviving. Right, this is so, where you hoard guns. <laughs> right, is in this area. When they were here. talking about like like you drive up and they've got like skulls from like mountain lions. Oh up there. God, okay, <laughs> which is like crazy. Turn so anyway, run. so the the uh the wedding the actual ceremony mm -hmm. is like further up this hill okay and you know in Colorado the air is really thin yeah so we I'm looking at this hill and and the people are like well you can wait like we're we're driving people up there I was like no I need to get up there a little earlier because then sure. you know I need to be ready and yeah. prepare for sing right. That hill made me realize how much out of shape I was <laughs> because I walked up that hill and it felt like the hill never stopped. I was like, I don't need to climb Everest. I don't need to climb Kilimanjaro right. because I have climbed this hill. This is obviously bigger. I got to that hill and I had to just stop for like two minutes and just like, like I felt like I had run like a six minute mile. Yeah. It was crazy. Oh my God. Yeah. So 
Well, you've you've uh, now conquered the largest hill in the world. <laughs> In Colorado, <laughs> yes. Awesome. Well, we've run out of time. Thank you so much for joining us, Jero. Yes, thanks As for always, me. we this time we don't have to re-record it. Yes! That's fantastic. Victory. Jero Williams will be playing Wednesday, June twelfth at the Wharf. At the Wednesdays at the Wharf in Washington D.C. Go check out his new single that summer on all of your digital music solutions, and check out Facebook.com/slash the JW Experience without the E for more information about his music and other shows. Uh, please like our posts, follow us, retweet us, and share the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We cannot do this without you. Also, don't forget to review us on Facebook, iTunes, and Google Play. If you're an artist, musician, or culture creator in the D.C. area, we want you on our show. Email us at booking at anotherwastedhour.com. Thanks to everyone for all their contributions, but most of all, thanks to our guest, Jero Williams, and you, our fans, for wasting a perfectly good hour with us. This has been Another Wasted Hour, and if you just realized that, don't blame us. We warned you.
sorry, Moni. <laughs>